Hey, was geht? Welcome back to another episode to Save and Sound. My name is Rootnode and today I would like to show you the latest updates in Ableton Live 12.1. So what is new? We have amazing news, guys. We have Auto Shift and Auto Shift is basically like Auto Tune for Ableton. We have a drum sampler. We have Auto Tagging. We have a new saturation algorithm, especially for 808s, which is always amazing, right? Um, and then on top of that, we have a new limiter. So there are so many new updates for Ableton. So if you're an Ableton user, also let me know in the comments what you think we need next. Um, but yeah, without further ado, let's check it out. So let's start with the auto shift. It's the auto tune for Ableton, right? And I really think it's so powerful compared to the to the other auto tunes that we have in the market because it's working within Ableton and with the scale system and everything. So it's really intuitive. Um, let's check out the features. So we have the strength, which is basically determining how strong um, auto shift will work, and we have the smooth. So let's give it a listen i recorded my vocals and if i turn the strength down it's basically like the um dry dry, dry wet uh knob that you usually have and the smooth is how fast the uh, vocals um switch from one note to the other so let's give it a listen and i play around with the knobs We're running in circles upside down lost and found you safe and sound so as you can hear, when I turn down the smooth knob, it's basically sounding like T, like a T pain effect, like a really strong auto tune, you know. And but it's by default by 50, so that's a really good starting point. And then we can just do whatever we want to do from here, right? Um, apart from that, we have a format shift. I really love this one because. Um, yeah, we can just play around with it as well. And obviously we can go higher as well. Give him like this chipmunk vibe here. Um, and apart from that, we have a vibrato, we have a dry wet knob here. Um, the cool thing about it, we can also change the pitch, which is nice. But most importantly, we can um, change like the the shift of the entire vocal. So what that means is basically we can like duplicate this entire vocal track. And since I um, on the top corner, I changed the key to C, C sharp minor which means we can basically enable it right here. So if I click it, boom, it will automatically get the right key and then we can just shift it, which what that means, if we just, for example, sing steady notes, we can, for example, um, just create harmonies out of it, which is amazing. Uh, in this case, I tried it before. It doesn't work that good, but just give it a listen right now. So this one is um, shifted three up. And this one is the same. So it doesn't sound really good, but you get the idea. For certain notes, it would be like a really good use. Um, apart from that, we have LFOs here. So just click on it and you enable it. And then we can play with the different parameters. Um, so we can set like a rate to... And then just, for example, play with the format or with the pen, panning. So as you can see, you can do crazy things with it. And this is just the vocal parts of it, right? And we can use it for every possible thing like it just have to be a monophonic signal and then we can just alter it however we want to um, so yeah i really love this new auto shift and i uh, another cool thing about it is if you switch it on live mode you can see in the in the bottom right here um, that it has like a latency from zero so if i switch it back uh, so yeah if i switch to live mode we get like zero latency as you can see in the um, top uh, bottom left corner. And if I click on the live icon again, we have like a latency 
uh, from 34 milliseconds. And this one basically depends on the uh, input we are, we are choosing here. And the input is basically determining um, what kind of vocal range you have. So if you're a high singer, like uh, most of the time female uh, vocals, then you choose high. And then obviously that makes sense, right? Mid and bass. Um, so yeah, that's it for the auto shift. And there are so cool features with it. And I'm sure it always will get even better. So yeah, this is really amazing. So let's go to the drum sampler. So I prepared this drum loop right here. And as you can see, it's like pretty basic. Um, I dragged in all of the new drum sampler, as you can see here. You have to drag it in manually for now. Maybe it will change. There's no, like on default, it will be still in the simpler or sampler, um, but it's pretty dope. So you can do like a bunch of different things now, um, like starting from attack, hold, decay, transpose, detune. I mean, we already had it before, but the coolest part is basically around this section right here. So I'm choosing this hi-hat right now. And, you know, there are different options to choose from, like there's stretch, loop, pitch envelope, punch, 8-bit, and so much more. And the coolest thing about it is that you can actually automate these parameters as well. So just by playing the, the drum loop. And I mean, you get the idea, right? You can even loop it and give it like a complete different, different rhythm. You have pitch envelope. And you can like within this drum sampler change the entire sample completely. So this is definitely a huge update that they started. Um, and obviously we have filters here. We have, um, yeah, so many things that we can now manipulate. Uh, so I love this new, um, I love this new drum sampler and can't wait to really use it in the workflow. And another feature is the auto tags. So you can see the small icon right here and you just need to enable it. And then Ableton will automatically auto tag the samples um, that are not longer than one minute. And yeah, just for, for example, we could think of trying to search for guitars and like a one shot, let's say, and then Ableton just analyzed all of these samples in your category or in your folders and just, you know, gave them like the guitar tag. So that works pretty good. Um, I mean, we can try for snares. Obviously snares is too easy. Let's try with vocals. So yeah, pretty cool as you can see. And there's actually not more to tell about. It's a nice feature. The next thing on our list is the saturator. And this one is really cool, especially for 808s, because now we have um, more options and we can change the low amount. So basically moving kind of, it's kind of like a multiband saturator now. So um, yeah, as you can see, we can change it either like with an, like an EQ setting or move it right here. Uh, we have dry wet, we have the drive. Um, we can also determine if it's soft or hard clipping. Um, and yeah, just give it a listen. And we basically give it way more color and it sounds more full um, without getting like too much rid of the low end. Um, so yeah, really cool, cool feature, I would say. Okay, and the last one that we have is the limiter slash maximizer. Yes, you heard right. We finally have a maximizer within Ableton. They also changed the layout. And right now I think it looks really nice. Like I think about 10 years, it looked the same. And now it looked, it finally changed. 
Um, this one is really cool. We have different modes here, standard, soft clip and true peak and also can change it by clicking here on the maximizer mode. So this way it's way more transparent. We can go louder. Um, we can use even soft clipping, which is amazing. So we can set the ceiling obviously right here. Um, and it's pretty easy, I would say. So let's see how loud we can go. This is not even mixed. There's not even like anything on the um, guitar, but I'm just want to give it a little bit more depth. So a little bit RC20. Let's take out the noise. Okay, now. Yeah, and the cool thing about the maximizer is that you don't clip the peaks, but you just take the lower signals and make it um, louder. So this is a really nice update. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Also, let me know in the comments what you think Ableton should add next. And remember to stay focused, calm and safe and sound.